Hi! So, part of what I'm going to do here on my channel is to show you a bunch of tips for light burn and how it communicates with the uh, laser back here. This is a Mira 9 from Eon Laser USA and he uses a software light burn. So, I'm going to be doing a lot of things on this channel and I gotta get it going somewhere so let's start with a bunch of tips, a series of helpful quality of life things that you can use to make your laser work better. Now, the software that the uh, machine comes with is Lightburn. When you get one of these machines, it gives you a license to use for a year to get all the updates and everything. So here is what you got uh, to work with. Now I do apologize, there are banging sounds going on in the background. I have a toddler. Yeah, I can't really stop that. Except for now. Buddy, could you just... Anyways, okay, so when you are uh, hooking your laser up for the first time, or maybe you have a completely different machine, that's fine. This software is great for whatever you're using. So I want to show a couple of quality of life things that I've implemented to make my job here a lot easier. Uh, first, going to go into general settings. Now, inches, millimeters, and seconds is what you want to have selected here. You're going to hear a lot of talk about people saying like, oh, it goes this fast, it goes this many inches per second, or this many millimeters per second. Now, if you're not comfortable with the metric system, that's fine. I would still recommend inches and millimeters per second. What that does is it keeps whatever your grid your engraving space is. Like this is a 24 by 36 inch engraving space. So it keeps that number, but it also respects the speed. This is 530 millimeters per second speed. So it keeps both. More often what I found is you're going to hear the millimeters per second in reference to speed. But as far as your layout of your materials, stick with inches. So that is, quality of life change number one. Uh, here in uh, Lightburn, also here in the settings menu, you have this beginner mode or not beginner mode. It's really just beginner or advanced. Turn off beginner mode. It is okay to jump into this with both feet and just see what all the details, all, all the tools that you can do. Uh, let's see. Um, so all of the things here look pretty good. File settings. The only thing I've really seen that you need to watch out for on here is your SVG import settings. Now myself, I use Inkscape for all of my design work, but maybe you use Illustrator. Make sure whatever one you're using, you select this DPI. That's just the scale of things. So if I'm working on something in Inkscape and I bring it over to here, there's a scaling issue that it works with. But if you're using Illustrator and you import it to here and it's using this Inkscape setting, your scaling might be way off. So make sure you have that selected, whichever one you're using. And that's that's it on that. Uh, here in device settings. Uh, now with your mirror machine, you'll get a bunch of these offset adjustments. So please don't use my numbers. That's dependent on whatever your machine is. That's what they'll send you. Uh, but here in the, sorry my mouse is off. Here in the basic settings, enable job checklist. I have that enabled so that whenever you start a job, it comes up with a custom message that you've enabled. So whenever I start a job, it'll say, oh, is your air shirt on? And I'll think, oh, <laughs> you know what? I did forget to do that. And I'll turn on my exhaust. So for someone like me, I have ADHD. That is something I definitely uh, run into. Now, you'll notice that I have a black square here, and now it is a blue square. Here is the difference of why it shows a line versus a filled in. When you use Lightburn for the first time, it may have this, where you have two of these shapes, two different colors, and over here in your cuts and layers menu, one says line, one says fill. But now, if you weren't looking at that, you were just looking at these boxes, you wouldn't be able to maybe remember, oh, which one's line, which one's fill. Go to window, select filled smooth, that way everything that gets engraved is filled in, and everything that follows a path is just a line. 
So if we were to select both of these, we would even see it here in the preview window that everything is being treated as it should. That is just a quality of life thing. That doesn't necessarily affect the quality of your engraving. That's just in the design process, setting up a job. Just do that and go from there. So this video is more just throwing a whole bunch of information at you. So feel free to pause and go back and rewatch things as needed. But here are some other uh, things that I've uh, learned to appreciate. Uh, here's here, down here. Optimize cut path. Uh, I've run into this a few times where I'll have several uh, options here. Let's say I have all of these different colors here. Let's stack them all on top of each other. So for some reason, I want to engrave this. And let's optimize cut path. And let's assume that we want engrave to be on top. And then it does score line, and then it does red, and then it does green. Now, that's your order of operations. But I have turned off Optimize Cut Path. So if I select these, I go to my preview window, and let's go ahead and see what it does. Uh-oh, it's doing the box first. The box was my blue line. That's number two on this list. And now it's doing number one on this list. Then after it does that, it does number three, and then it does number four. That's not what I wanted at all. So, what the heck? Now, this is not ideal, having something like this. So you want to click Optimize Cut Path, and that turns on your optimization settings. And essentially what that does is, by default, it orders it by layer and priority. So it takes the order of your list up here into account. So don't necessarily change anything in this, this just shows you what's happening. And I'll probably change up two of these things, which I'll explain. So now that we have this order of operations, I'm going to do my grave first, and then any score surface lines, then my inside cuts, and then my outside cuts. So I select all that, I hit play, it does engrave first, then it does my score line, then my inside cut, then my outside cut. So now it's taking the hierarchy here into account order that you arrange things, it does that. And if you have to change it at all, you can click and drag it, or you can use these little arrows here on the side. And so now it'll do a big square first, then the engraved square, then my inside and outside cut. Now the reason why I have uh, two cut colors, this inside and outside cut, the simple explanation of that is if you have a donut, let's duplicate that, let's create a donut shape. You're going to run into possibly the fact that it'll cut the outside circle first and then your inside circle. Whenever you have one of these machines, it's going to cut and it might drop your material. So if you cut the outside one first, whatever is inside might get dropped. Sorry, I have to stop my toddler from playing these very loud tablets. I have a toddler, he has a tablet, and it's loud. I can't really change that. So, whenever you're planning for something like this, just do yourself the favor, make an inside cut color and an outside cut color, and arrange those accordingly. You might also, for some reason, have an extra internal cut color that you want to cut before all that. Then go ahead. Cut inside inside, you know, however you want to define it. It cuts this one first, that second, this one, third. Those, this is just quality of life things, how to run Lightburn to show how user friendly it is, how intuitive it is if you want to plan things. So that's really it for this one. Lightburn is an amazing bit of software that you can definitely use with really any laser, but I use it mine with my Eon laser from Eon Laser USA. Yeah, it's a Maronite. It's a wonderful machine. I love it. I will be showing a lot of videos here on things that I make, things that I engrave, things that I cut, things that I sell, and how you can make those things too. So thank you for watching. See you on the next one. You can do great things. Bye.